You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Highlights of the news today, Wednesday the 11th of April. Kenyan-born councillor suspended for fraud and forgery. Hooked Muller loses his appeal with Strasbourg. Memorials in place for tragic Titanic anniversary. Left-wing Vaz slams UK border agency. Ex-Tesco worker threatens to put head of colleague on roof. Romney's opposition in the Republican Party crumbles. Thought for the day, the real cost of abortion. UK News. A Kenyan-born Labour councillor has been suspended by Basildon Labour Council for fraud and forgery in Kenya. Daniel Munyambu has been suspended by his party, but only until the outcome of his trial. He is said to have forged receipts worth £18,000. The Labour Party is said to be surprised and apparently unable to make further comment. The trial is expected to take place in six months' time, However, he will still remain a Labour councillor in the Vange ward in Essex until the end of his trial. Hate preacher Abu Hamza has lost his appeal to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, and although he can still appeal once more, he should be kicked out of the UK within three months. There are five other suspected terrorists who will be joining this crazy mullah being extradited to the US to face trial in the United States. The outcome of this case was by no means certain, however, as we all know, the judges at Strasbourg have often given bizarre and ridiculous rulings from this court. However, any ruling to the contrary would have been seen as Strasbourg standing in judgment on the United States and their penal system. Had they done so, the implications for Britain's difficult relationship with the court would have been profound. Opposition amongst Tory MPs to the court would have hardened, and divisions with the Lib Dems, Strasbourg's champions in Whitehall, would have been further exposed. A British National Party spokesman has said that the sooner that Hamza, his cohorts and his family are removed from this country, the better. Let us just see how many protest marches are allowed to take place from his many followers. People are getting ready to mark the sinking of the RMS Titanic a hundred years ago on Sunday, the 15th of April. The Titanic sank beneath the freezing waters of the North Atlantic after hitting an iceberg. Auctions for memorabilia are to take place with the prices set to rocket. The MS Balmoral will be taking a commemorative trip across the Atlantic to where the Titanic sank. Hopefully that is where the similarities end for the many passengers that will be travelling on this ship. Remembered are the heroes like the musicians on board from Leeds and Emily Richards from Cornwall, who survived the sinking and who died in 2002 at the grand old age of 98 years old. Left-wing Keith Vaz of the Labour Party has commented that the UK border agency could do better. The two-faced Asian Labour MP, whose party has seen millions of illegal immigrants cross British borders since his party was in power in 1997 to 2010, has had the audacity to comment on immigration. Nigel Keith Anthony Standish Vaz, known as Keith Vaz, was born in 1956 in Aden, Yemen, to parents originally from the Indian state of Goa, which accounts for his Goan Portuguese surname. He moved to Bradford in England with his family in 1965. He is a Roman Catholic, but shortly after being elected in 1989, Vaz led a march of thousands of Muslims in Leicester, calling for Salman Rushdie's book, The Satanic Verses, to be banned. He was also involved in the Filkin Inquiry and the Hinduja Affair. He has proved he is no friend to the British people, and if the UK border agency had been doing its job many years ago, we would not have had Keith Vaz or his ilk in this country. Euro news. Spain has had a rise in bond yields this week. Although the rise may be good news, the Spanish people fear that due to this, austerity measures may become tougher. The bonds have risen steadily this week on the international market, sources have claimed. A Tesco shelf stacker allegedly threatened to behead his colleague and put her head on the store roof after she repeatedly turned down his offers of cash for a scam marriage an employment appeals tribunal heard yesterday. But Yazir Assad, 28, an accountancy student originally from Pakistan, claims he was unfairly dismissed by the supermarket giant over what he claims are contrived allegations against him. The tribunal heard evidence from two Polish co-workers yesterday who claim that Mr. Azad, who has lived in Dublin for several years, 
offered each of them thousands of euros in exchange for a paper marriage that would allow him to get an Irish work visa since his student visa was due to expire. Rachel Garton, who at the time was the store manager at the Tesco store in Sandy Mount, South Dublin, testified that two female employees complained to her of feeling very frightened and distressed by the threats of violence allegedly made by Mr. Azad. He had worked alongside the women on the night shift at the store. She alleged he made the threats after both workers turned down his offers of marriage in exchange for between 8,000 and 10,000 euros because his visa was running out. Tesco worker Cassia Navaka, who was Mr. Azad's line manager on the night shift, told the tribunal that Mr. Azad asked her about three or four times if she would marry him for money, including twice on the same night in October 2009. He first offered around 8,000 euros and then increased the offer to between 10,000 and 15,000 euros, she said. After she refused the offers, he started to be really rude and refused to do tasks that she asked him to complete. Asked if she would work with him again, she said, No, he's scaring me. He scared me before. The hearing has been adjourned until June the 7th. World News Mitt Romney, the Republican presidential candidate, will face Barack Obama in the presidential elections later this year. His closest rival, Rick Santorum, decides to drop out of the race for the challenge against Obama after major wins by Romney, and also the stress on his family during a long campaign to try and reach the White House. Mitt Romney will be the Republican challenger against Barack Obama in the elections later this year. Kofi Annan is still trying to reach out to Syria's neighbour Iran over the continued bloodshed in the war-torn country. Annan said that the key to peace in Syria is to support his plan to stop more military action against the rebels. Thought for the day. The real cost of abortion. It has been reported in the mail over the Easter weekend that the care watchdog has come under attack after claiming orders to investigate abortion clinics are compromising its ability to inspect hospitals and nursing homes. Well, that's no surprise, is it? Ministers had told the CQC to carry out spot checks of abortion clinics after it was reported that doctors had been carrying out terminations on wrong-sex fetuses. How can you have a wrong-sex fetus? In a country where the indigenous population are either putting off having babies until it is too late or having to resort to IVF, who is actually having wrong sex babies? Not us, I fear, but the growing epidemic of immigrant mothers who feel they can choose the sex of their child because they are so fertile. For the years 1968 to 2009, the combined number of abortions in the UK recorded was, according to Polish statistics, 7,222,338 for that period. For the actual year of 2009, it was 202,105 for that year. I have a feeling this does not include the morning after pill. This is for the recorded medical abortions. We are, as a country, effectively committing genocide ourselves against ourselves. Now, I'm not preaching on morals here or the welcome availability of legal medical abortion, which takes this deed out of the back streets into supposedly the light. But everything, including this act, is open to abuse, both by the practitioners and the patient. It is mainly Asian doctors accused of allowing selective abortions for mainly the Asian and immigrant communities. It is also usually girl fetuses aborted. This is because in most Eastern cultures, boys carry on the family traditions of work, children and finance. All girls carry is hopefully a dowry and a good marriage. Let's face it, not too long ago in China, baby girls were left to die on the side of a road, and now they put them into orphanages. Due to their stringent and necessary cap on baby numbers, boy babies are much more in demand there, and indeed are being stolen off the streets in main cities. A Dr. Prava Sivaraman, who worked at a clinic in Manchester, has since been suspended by the GMC for allowing wrong sex abortions. I should think so and I personally hope that this medical practice is put with the replacement hymens or virginity membranes, the female circumcisions, and other non-British custom surgeries in the bin. But of course it will not happen, because vast numbers of money are expended in most of these cases, and he who pays the piper plays the tune. It would cost the British Department of Health an extra £1 million to cover the work involved in inspecting these abortion clinics, which will take a thousand days. Why? Although I do not agree with abortions per se, unless medically needed or mentally needed, why pay to monitor what are mostly our ethnic communities in paying to have a right-sex child, usually male? 
Well, that is obvious. If we have the ethnic communities in our midst producing mainly, if not all, boy babies that pose as a threat to our future as a people, a whole army of male children being bred within our shores, educated by us, to what end? Homegrown terrorists or jihadists? What country in the world will allow such an increase of one population within its walls and the decrease of its own population? Only us, the English. Put this with the gradually more than marginalised elderly of our own. We are told we are growing older. Well, the alternative isn't much better, is it? We are getting more infirm, living longer, heaven forbid, and all prey to going batty. We are encouraged to do away with family life, which includes actually looking after one's elderly relatives and putting them in homes to die. We are killing off our most respected citizens years before their time, aborting thousands of indigenous potential citizens, and forming whole ghettos of newcomers and providing the means for them to breed out of control. Two of my children work in the care industry. Where they get that from is beyond me. It certainly isn't from my side of the family. I'm starting to care more for the elderly because I've passed the age where I consider myself immortal, namely young, and now know I have feet of clay. Whilst not yet on the saga runs, one must look ahead. I have told my relatives, spare though they are, to leave me alone with my cats and garden. My idea of living hell is to be in a room full of old people, looking at an old TV, and being shouted at by some slant-eyed git who cannot speak English. Couple this with the newspaper item that if you're over a certain age, doctors will not bother to treat you if you have cancer. Well, this obviously does not apply if you are a rich old person, because you can pay a doctor to treat you. This idea does not extend past the NHS boundaries, of course. I'm sure this idea is being peddled to make the average Brit want to commit suicide and end it all. Don't worry, the elderly are useful. They have lived lives of experience and come through much worse than any of the younger generations can think. There is an old Japanese proverb that states a woman must do two things in her life, produce a son and plant a tree. We have worked, we have lived, we have loved, we have produced children and we have planted trees. What we must do now is wake up to the ever-growing threat of our own youngsters jumping on the abortion bandwagon with the morning after pill and adding to the massive effect that soon we will be underpopulated as far as the indigenous people go in our own country. And finally, nomicide in garden centre. Disgusted parents this week blasted garden centre bosses after they started selling novelty murdered garden gnomes. Angry mums have said their youngsters have reacted with horror at the distasteful ornaments which show a dead gnome lying face down with a knife embedded in its back. The £12.99 gnomes are currently on sale at the Hollybush Garden Centre near Cannock Staffs. A disgusted mother said her daughter was in tears after seeing the massacred gnomes on display. She said, We have lots of garden gnomes sitting at the toadstools and pushing wheelbarrows in our back garden and my daughter has a little name for them all. Sweet. Garden centre bosses claim the stab gnomes are away from the family-friendly ornaments, but parents claim they were in full view of the children. Well, I may be talking out of turn here, but compared to what the average youngster sees on TV, a dummy stab gnome may not be the best of taste, but hardly worth a world war over. The things probably come from China anyway, so obviously do not reflect the love with which some Europeans hold gnomes. I am not one of them, however. I cannot stand the little creatures. You have been listening to The World at Eight. Do keep your comments and ideas coming in. They give me food for thought, as well as giving me encouragement that our cause is not lost. I am Lynn Mozart, and I wish you all a very good night. <laughs>